Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the velocity of a block that's traveling up this circular path. So let's say that we've got a block traveling up the circular path and we want to find the velocity of this block right as it reaches this position just here. What is its velocity? Alright, have a shot at this yourself first guys and come back when you're done. Okay, well in order to do this, I'm going to be using something called energy methods, which states that the change in mechanical energy is equal to the work done by non-conservative forces. I could have chosen to do this problem a different way, and in a few videos from now, I'm going to be solving the same problem using impulse and momentum, but now I'm just going to focus on energy methods because I think it's easier. Okay, well, in order to do this problem, let's first remind ourselves on what a non-conservative force is, and to do that, let's draw a free body diagram. So this is what our block looks like sometime as it's sliding up this hill. It looks something like this, and let's draw that over here. This is what our block looks like sometime as it's sliding up the hill. Let's draw a free body diagram. We know it's got two main forces. It's got the force due to gravity mg, and it's got a normal force perpendicular to our slope n. Now, we also have friction acting to the left, but I'm going to assume friction is going to be negligible in this particular case. Like I'm going to assume this slope's made of ice, so there's not going to be much friction. But if we were including friction, that means there are two potential forces here which could do non-conservative work. So those two forces are your normal force and your friction force. Remember, work is equal to your force times by your distance in the direction of your force. Right, so your friction force would do work if there were friction, but the normal force will never ever do any work. That's because it's going to be always perpendicular to the direction of the block moving. So in other words, the force never moves the object in the direction of that force, therefore the work done is always going to be zero. And that's going to be the same with every dynamics problem we're ever going to do. Okay, so that's... That's, that explains why this term right here is going to be zero, because friction force is negligible and the work done by the normal force is zero. All right, now let's go into the maths of it. Let's expand the left-hand side of this equation out. We know that the left-hand side is a half times m times v2 squared minus v1 squared plus mg h2 minus h1, and that's going to be equal to your right-hand side, which is, as we just discussed, equal to zero. Okay, let's talk about these terms a little bit, and now let's um, substitute them in so we can figure out how to solve this problem. Well, I'm going to start the experiment at this time right here, where your velocity at your first point is equal to 30 meters per second. So V1 is going to be equal to 30 meters per second, right? V2 is, well, we don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. So let's leave that as a question mark for now. But H1, let's figure out what that is. Well. In order to figure out h1 and h2, we need to define an axis. So let's put an axis somewhere. I'm going to put an axis right here on this ground point just here. So this will be y, and this right here, this right here will be x just there. Based off where I've put my axis, what is h1? What is the distance from your axis towards your first point of your block? It's going to be zero meters, right? And and in, in actual fact, it's actually this distance just here from here to here. But I've actually blown this block up to make it look bigger than it really is. The block is actually like this size. So zero is a really, really good approximation. So H1 is going to be zero. What's going to be H2? Well, H2 is going to be this distance. It's going to be the distance from your center point of your mass towards your, towards your axis which is going to be this distance. This is going to be h2. And let me do it in red. This is going to be h2. This distance to this distance. That's going to be h2 just there. So let's solve for h2. h2 is equal to, well, we don't know that yet. So let's solve for that now. Well, in order to do this, we need to know a little bit of geometry. So let's get started. Let's redraw our circular slope again. I can't draw it anywhere near as well as I did before, but it looks something like that. Right? We know it's a circular path, so that means we know that this distance here is 25 meters, and we know that this distance here is 25 meters from here to here. Right? And if we were to create an imaginary line just across here, we know that this angle here is 45 degrees, meaning that we know that this distance from here to here is going to be 25 cosine 45. Right? That's, um, that's a little bit cluttered, so let me just draw a red line just here. That's going to be 25 cosine 45. And the beauty of figuring out this distance just here is we can use it to figure out 
this distance just here. So let's do that. We know that our our h2 value, remember it's this distance just here. This is this is h2. h2 is going to be 25 the total length minus 25 cosine 45. All right. So if you plug that into your calculator, you're left with 25 minus 25 times cosine 45 is going to be equal to h2 is equal to 7.3 three two two three meters okay that's how far the block rises vertically when it's going up the circular slope okay so we've got so we've got we've got this value sorted we've got this value sorted and now we've got this value sorted we've got one equation one unknown perfect let's do this this is going to be a half times by m which well Another thing we should point out is if we divide both sides by m, m cancels out. So we're left with a half times v2, which we still don't know, minus v1, which is 30 squared. And as a brief aside, I should probably mention that v2, very misleading, is actually a scalar. It's going to be the magnitude of your velocity. It, it, you don't need to concern yourselves with direction. This is the magnitude. So it's going to be minus 30 squared, doesn't matter what direction, plus g times by h2 minus h1. What's h2? Well, we just discussed it was 7.3223 minus h1, which is 0. And that's going to be equal to 0. OK, so now this becomes a matter of arranging the algebra. So let's do that. That means we know this is going to be v2 squared um, is equal to uh, minus g times 7.3223 times by 2 if we bring the 2 to the other side and then what we can do is we can just add 30 squared I'm doing this all in one step and then we can just square root that to get rid of the squared sign I hope that makes sense I'm kind of jumping the gun here a little bit but I'm gonna assume our algebra is pretty good um, so now let's so let's now let's solve v2 what's the magnitude of our velocity at our second point well if we if we solve for this, we're left with the square root of minus 9.81 times by 7.3 times 2 plus 30 squared. And you're left with your final answer of 27.5 meters per second. OK. All right, put your hands up if you think this is the end of our question. I'm going to assume you put your hand up, which means you're wrong because we've been asked to calculate the velocity of our second point, meaning that we have to add direction. We have to add direction. Remember, a velocity is a magnitude and a direction. Fortunately for us, though, we know that the block's going to be traveling parallel to our path, meaning that we know it's really just going to be traveling in this direction just here. It's going to be traveling in this direction right here. And to quantify that, we know that if I were to redraw a circular path again, it looks something like this, something like this. We know our, our object's traveling in this direction, and we know this angle here is 45. We can create an imaginary line just here. We know this is 90 degrees, meaning we know this is 45. We know that this is now is 45, meaning that we can quantify this now as saying 45 degrees here. That is our answer, so let me just box that extra bit in. That is our answer. We've got, we've got now our magnitude of our velocity, and we've also got the direction it's traveling in. We're done. Now, before I get involved um, in the next video, I really want to talk about um, the velocity here. Notice that it started off with a velocity of 30 meters per second, but then dropped down as it went up the hill. This probably meets your intuition, but let's discuss this as well. That just means that some of your kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy, and that's why we've seen a drop in our velocity, because the kinetic energy has gone down. Okay, guys, in the next video, I'm going to be solving the exact same question, except replacing a block for a disk that's moving. So instead of a block, we're going to have a disk that's going to be rotating as it, as it goes up this hill. As a, as a quick question for you, do you think the, the disk will have a higher, lower, or equal velocity to the block? All right, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Catch you later.